The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your garage. Let them prowl with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 49, NASDAQ up 28, S&P's up 7.5. And, and uh, Tom, do you, the, oh, I can see that. I can see a 29,000 uh, Dow hat on. There it is. Yes, I've got it. It's in sprinkles and gold and diamonds. It's there, ready. There it is, no doubt. <laughs> gold, gold contract uh, flat at 1554 an ounce. We get silver up 9 cents, $18.03 an ounce. Light sweet crew down 54 cents, $59.03 cents a barrel. Notes and bonds, you get the 10-year up three ticks, trading 129 flat, 30-year up 13 at 157.07, and king dollar. King dollar up 20 ticks, trading 97.468. Euro is at 111. Yen is out here at 109.5, and, and the pound is at 130 to 1 U.S. dollar. Pretty amazing, uh, no doubt. And It uh, sure is, man. Just to jump, I, you know, you were saying 29,000. We, of course, hit that number. Um, I just pulled up a quick chart. I was curious myself. I mean, the numbers are mammoth. When you look at the S&P, you look at the Dow. This is going back 15 years. We were at 6,400 at the bottom of that recession after 2008. But you even look at it where we had that pullback in kind of 2015. I mean, you had the Dow down in February of 2016 at 15,452. So you're talking wow. about doubling things from 2016. That's intense. Um, isn't that? I, yeah. I agree, man. It's just remarkable. That's, so. that's there's no doubt. Oh, yeah. I, I got it up right now. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, you do it on the S&P. You know, the S&P in the beginning of 2016, we were at uh, 1,800. We're now at 3,300. And that's in four years. Just a remarkable run, especially when you consider the run that it had in the eight years leading up to 2016. It just powers on, man. Yeah. And if we take a look at the Dow Industrials, putting the juice into it, Apple this morning. Apple's putting 18 positive points. You get uh, Visa 7, Microsoft 6, IBM 6, taken away from it. Travelers uh, 8, uh, minus 8, uh, Walmart minus 6, Boeing minus 5. Other than that, no, no big numbers. Uh, How about Boeing? Could we jump into yes. Boeing? Yeah. Because boy, oh boy, man, <laughs> it, it, it is amazing in terms of what comes out now. Um, we had heard about these emails, right? Right. We we talked about this, another batch of emails that uh, had been discovered, handed over to Congress, I believe, and now they're just being made public. And boy, oh boy, I mean, um, you almost can't overstate how ridiculous that type of, and, you know, to say. So let, let's just, let, let me just read some of the, yeah, some you, of the you quotes. Gotta, you got to read it because <laughs> this is pretty intense, folks, okay? These, now, these, these are the people that are working on the plane, too. The, the monkeys and cloud. And yeah, clowns, so in right? messages from April of 2017, I have it up here. Um, one Boeing employee told another, this airplane is designed by clowns who are in turn supervised by monkeys. Another message showed a Boeing employee hopeful they could, quote unquote, gang up on regulators and steer them, quote unquote, in the direction we want. A Boeing employee asked a colleague in February of 2018, would you put your family on a Max simulator trained aircraft? I wouldn't. His co-worker replied, no, wow, quote that's unquote. Intense. That's intense. Um, and in the same exchange, one of the employees says, our arrogance is our demise. I mean, you, you know, if you were yeah. writing a, a script of like one of the more evil co corporations out there, I mean, that yeah. is just the strongest language I could imagine. Um, and when you're dealing with hundreds of people's lives in planes, you know, this isn't selling, um, you know, TVs that might oh, not no. work correctly, right? No. You know, this is this is selling planes that you're gonna, you know, life or death. And uh, it's remarkable. So, you know, Boeing, I think the, the, the chart is saying that kind of Boeing has reached the max pain maybe because it's almost unchanged on that as in it's probably all priced in at this point maybe. That's what the chart's saying at least. But boy, oh boy, man, hopefully they get this together and they make sure it never happens again because seeing those emails, seeing how they knew this was gonna happen, 
um, and then seeing how it took two planes. Imagine all of this stuff was going on before the first plane crashed, right? Yes. And then it took two planes of of human life. Um, you can't. It's, it's just right. uh, it's and, a tragedy, man. And, it is know, a tragedy. Pushing around the regulators, the whole ball of yes. wax. I mean, everything. It, you know. It's it's every and, single conspiracy theory you'd think, right? In terms yeah. of covering up everything, influencing the regulators, profits over human life. Um, so and, we'll and one see. Of the, you know, one of the crucial things here, folks. Okay, is that if you remember, Boeing moved their headquarters from Seattle to Chicago. So. All was that meant is that they, for some reason, they wanted to be in Chicago in a high-rise building. Now, what they did is that they moved away from their, their manufacturing facilities, okay? Yeah. So, you know, we'll see how that shook out also, because the, the reality yeah. is, is that, man, if you're the CEO of a company, I'd like to walk right down and, and see what kind of work is getting done, you know? And the bottom line is that they walked away from that, um, you know, so... You know, there's hopefully that's examined. I agree. Oh, it's it's a big deal, man. Yeah. I mean, it's it it it'd, it'd be like well, it, it'd be like folks. If you're manufacturing anything, you kind of want to be there. I mean, that's that would that would be my take on it anyway. But the the emails themselves are showing that, and what does happen, folks, and we've seen it plenty of times. People live in different worlds, and they're so highfalutin that. Those executives, I'd say, are living in different worlds. Do you know what I'm saying? And evidently, some of the engineers too. <laughs> yeah, I don't see how that's not criminal, man. When you, um, you know, push that through and hundreds of people die, and 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 it seemed to be pretty apparent that there were problems that they were trying to hide from regulators. Yeah, well, there's no doubt. There's no yeah. doubt. Let's go take a look at the um, higher volume equities out here. Well, actually, Intuitive Surgical, I want to look at first. Let me see this. So. Intuitive Surgical, this thing is like a always a highly volatile stock. I, I heard mean, you talking about that this, on the update. I hadn't seen that on yeah, my radar yet this, this morning. Thing, yeah, well, there it is. She's, there, there it is. Taking out a swing point, taking it out with volume. It's going to be like almost another ABC up. Unreal. It is. So let's see what they have to say. Is this an all-time high today? Yep, all-time high today, $616. And one year it's gone from 455 to 616. Um, let's see what they have to say. Is this just up, not even on numbers? My, that'll blow my mind. Today the ninth? No. It's, Today's the tenth. Today's the tenth. Okay, so last night they came up. Um, higher, they see higher procedures in 2020. So this is only uh, let me look at this. Yeah, this is only a preliminary. So this is like a preliminary coming out that they're going to do good. They're coming out with their numbers on the 23rd of yeah. January. No, it's great. Just I, I have the Thinkorswim platform up there, and what's great that you know they always have. You can see when the earnings are announced, right? When the call, yes. the earnings call takes place. None of that on this chart, but it looks like that came out at about 4:05, right after the market last night. They must have come out and told the uh, told the market, "Hey, guess what? We got good news two weeks from today." Unbelievable, right? Yeah. And if we take a look at this, let me look at these numbers because this is the Da Vinci system. Look at this number. So you got 2.7 billion they did in 2016. They plan on doing 5.1 billion in 2020. Look at those profit numbers too, starting monster. Months. Yeah. Okay. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow Industrials right now up 19. NASDAQ up 21. S&P's up 4.5. We're coming right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now up 26. NASDAQ is uh, up 25. S&Ps are up 5. And I got to go look at this. And I know we're talking larger numbers, but <laughs> I know Maria just put in the den. We're up 1,000 points since Tuesday. Yeah, I wasn't even getting it. It is, man. I think we're uh, 20. We're right almost below 28,100. I'm not sure if we hit 28. Did we? Let's see. <laughs> We're at 28,376 on that's, the 31st. <clears throat> that's not the overnight, though. Let me... Uh, oh, overnight. I got it. Exactly. Cool. Yes, that's so right. Oh, my God. 20, of course. We were, I oh. got it up right here, if you want to pull up my chart. Oh, 28,084 yeah. looks oh. to be the overnight, and that was when the report of missiles flying yes, from Iran right. on bases with U.S. Yeah. troops. Because we were down at 550. Yeah. Amazing. And, so we're at 28,084. We just went above 29,000. 1,000 points. In the S&P... You're talking about we're at 3181. We just climbed to 3287. That's 110 S&P points from Tuesday night to Friday morning. Yep. And you know what ends up happening, folks, is that as we, uh, you, that's why you got to pay attention to percentages too, because two different things end up happening now. As we keep getting to these higher numbers, you know, you can go up 500, 1,000, but percentage-wise, it's not as much. But number-wise, it sounds like, oh my God. Now that being said, hey, guess what? You get a pullback percentage-wise, even of 10%. Now you're talking monster numbers, too. And how about we're about to get an 11 handle on the VIX, sitting at 12.23 right now. Um, with everything that's going on in the last five to seven days, you come into the weekend, and we're approaching an 11 handle on the VIX. I mean, we just discovered yesterday, and of course, there were, you know, um, there were guesses, there were estimates that it may have been the case that I, I ran, probably, it looks like shot down a Boeing plane, right. Iran firing missiles at bases with U.S. troops, the U.S. killing one of the top Iranian generals. Um, my goodness, it's just amazing that that, and you know, we were talking to Kevin Hinks yesterday. Great point, man. If you thought the VIX was great at 13 yesterday when we were talking to Kevin right. to hedge, get a little hedge, well, we're sitting at 1221 right now. Amazing.
Yeah, don't be afraid to put on a little bit of a hedge, man. Maybe with, uh, you know, because that VIX based right off the S&P options, right? Yes. And so if you want a little protection, might yes. be might be a nice time to buy yourself some. It's very some, inexpensive. That's right. 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 Wow. Because there's a lot of profits to protect in that S&P right now, I assume, man. Well, you know, it's so wild, man. I mean, I, I think, did I, did I send you that story about the, the saying that 40% of the S&P stocks right now are basically almost going to lose, losing money? It's like, no, I don't think I saw I that I was one. seeing things, man. Yeah, I'll find it in the next break, but it's, it's pretty intense, folks. We talk because, about winners and losers, man, right? That's remarkable, though. I had not heard that. Yeah, I mean, that's... that's <laughs> Uh, just like I said yesterday, it feels like 1998. I'm not kidding. And what happens there, folks, is that if that's what it is, let me tell you something. This can go on a lot longer than anyone ever realizes because, yeah. you know, once it started, it was like very unusual that you don't walk into work the next day and markets were tremendously right. higher, you know. And it, and, and it went on for about a year and a half before it collapsed. So it was like, okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, um, how about news of the day, non-farm payrolls? We haven't really touched yes. on it yet. So, 145,000 jobs created in December, rounding out quite a, a solid 2019. The market pretty much, uh, now that's slightly under. They were looking for 160,000. Uh, unemployment, 3.5%. It's amazing that we've now just holding steady at 3.5% unemployment. Um, the jobless rate met expectations for staying at a 50-year low. A more encompassing jobs rate that includes discouraged and underemployed workers fell to 6.7%, the lowest it's ever been in records going back to 1994. So that's a little bit of a different twist on things. Yeah. But again, you know, I um, the jobs number means such a different thing than it used to in the 80s and the 90s, let alone in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, anybody with a smartphone and a clean record can can drive for uber tomorrow with a job right right so that's that's the real interesting thing that didn't used to be the case you know where you could literally i can say that as long as you don't have you know some kind of dui or yeah. something that prevents you tomorrow you can have a job driving for uber right no I, there's no doubt man it's that a, was never the case that any no. single person you know with a driver's license which is what it is and it expands well beyond that right the gig economy but that's just the best example that comes to mind um, but it's literally the case. You could have a job. You put in your application. As long as they trust you to drive people around, you're picking up Uber Eats, you're driving people oh, tomorrow yeah. morning, and you're getting paid. But right. guess what? You're living paycheck to paycheck if that's happening with no benefits, and you're a contractor that we've gone through, you know, so then you, you carry that through for the government. Well, then there's no payroll taxes. We're in a huge deficit. The government's not collecting payroll taxes from some of the biggest corporations in the world. Um, how does that play out to the deficits, let alone the middle class Americans? No doubt. And yeah. you know, folks, if you're that, what's going to happen, like it's happening right now, right across the country, the Census Bureau is hiring. And okay. now this is get, this is kind of interesting because the, the Census Bureau folks, depending on what city you're in, um, that's not going to be that's going to be a pretty good job, actually. Um, you know, and high. Well, let's put it this way. And. The low, the lower number is still not bad compared to what um, minimum wage is. The lower number is like from fifteen dollars to seventeen fifty. Oh, I, that's nice. It, that's a nice. It is. I mean, what's the federal minimum wage? Seven dollars and twenty-five cents. Exactly. Yeah. And now in cities, though, that uh, you know, a high end, the Boston, New Yorks of the world, they have to they're paying up to thirty bucks, Tom. Okay. You know, so there's jobs out there, folks. I mean, if you look, you know, if, if you want some kind of a part-time job that was that was on a journal yesterday. Yeah. So. And they they need people. That's that's the thing that's pretty wild out here. Do you know what I mean? Yes. They, they need counters out here. So um, that'll I don't know if that takes six months. I don't know how long that actually takes. But um, the bottom line is that that's going to filter in uh, a few more jobs out here, right? You know. Yes, definitely. The um, let's get over that good old dollar. So the dollar, folks. Okay. This morning, this thing is hovering. And thus far, it's failed at its downdraft. So the downdraft in the dollar stock, well, it didn't, yeah, the big downdraft was December 27th. That's when it from, went from 96,500 to 97,500 to 96,900. Now, it got over that today. It's underneath it right now. You know, the bottom line is that now this hasn't changed the downtrend, but it certainly got back in the higher range. I mean, the dollar has been going one way, and that is up since December 31st. So 
We'll see if this is going to be another uh, change and get back inside the lower range again. So, uh, you know, and that has to do with this euro. This euro just can't move, man. <laughs> um, the euro came back to strength. Uh, this morning it rejected it. You know, it's the same day, okay, on, on the 27th. That's when the euro went from 111.96 to 111.88. We came back to 110.85 this morning, rejected it. 111.10, you know, we'll see whether it can get the juice going. So, there it is. Hey. So I just want to throw one chart up here that I was looking for, because we speak to the economy, right? Things roll on. So this was an interesting tweet I saw. I'm not familiar with who this person is, but it's coming from a Wall Street Journal blog. And it has to do with the auto loan and credit card delinquencies. Oh, yeah. And, and, and check out this chart, man. It was it was an eye-opener. No, I want to see this chart. Hey, you stay right there, That's Tom. a perfect tease. There we yeah, go. I, listen, man, it's a big one, man, because those car loans, five-year car loans, big numbers, the car... He's five years old, they're still paying for it. Come right back, folks. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials down uh, up 16, NASDAQ up 24, S&P's up 3.5. We're going to take a look at these car loans here. So let's take a look at this chart. 
Boy, you can almost let this chart speak for itself, right? So we have in the blue line, auto loan delinquency delinquencies 90 days plus. Okay. In the red line, credit card delinquencies 90 days plus. Okay. This is going back to 1999. So it's a very long-term chart. Yeah. Okay. And you can see the past crisis, 2008, 2009. We just talked about the runs we've had yeah. in the S&P and the Dow. You see the spike that both of those had from... 2005 ahead of now remember right we reached the lows you can see them start to tick up ahead of the housing sure. crisis so okay? if, you, if you're in your car right now folks when we're looking at 2005 the the blue line is what Tom again please blue line is auto loans so we're okay, talking so, about car loans yeah and we're talking about credit cards okay so the the blue line folks 2005 was approximately five percent of the loan balances it rockets up to, what is that, 13.5% in 2010, okay? The red line is kind yeah, of steady. So I, think, to, can it, I, yeah, I think the blue line, what it says, the blue line, you're looking at the left axis, yeah. okay? So in 2005, auto loans, I think credit cards where you have higher delinquencies. So the blue line, you're only at like 2% defaulting on your car loan. Yep. Al, and can then you put that back, please? I need, we need that chart up. Go ahead, Tommy. Okay, okay, I think I have it up. Oh, can you see you my do. chart? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying on Tiger TV. Yeah. Um, so 5%, excuse me, in 2005, we'll start it over. Car yeah. loans were at about 2% default. Yeah. Okay? Right. And Nothing. then you have credit card defaults at about 9%. Right. Fast forward to 2009, you have car defaults being almost 5.5%, so from 2 to 55 and you have credit cards go from about 9 to 14% default. Now, both of those numbers fall almost right back to, to the lows in about 2014, 2015. Yes. But boy, oh boy, car loans especially from about 2014, 2015 have yeah. gone from 8% default and are now at about 12%. That's a lot. And you have credit cards just basically from 2016, 2017, going from about 2.75% maybe on this left axis, yep. now picking up to 3.25. Um, small differences, but boy, oh boy, when you look at these trends, you look at the trends in the way that these started to pick up ahead of the 2000 crisis, ahead of right. the 2008 recession, and then you, you don't have to be a, a genius to see the trend especially in the car loans man look at that we're almost back up to where we were at the height of of you know the recession yeah and you know i i like the idea that the credit cards aren't that bad there actually the yeah you know, i hear you the, the car we, loans we, though and I, you know last time i bought a car man you know i was in shock that they actually had five-year loans <laughs> um you know because i'm saying to myself five years from now man that's a long time right um, you know, they, they, they push people into six years regularly as well, and, um, and, and I, the thing that shocks me more, and I completely agree, the thing that shocks me more is the average sales price for a car yeah. these days. It's so expensive, right? It's, it's pr probably approaching like $50,000 for a new I, car. I, I know. I, I, which is staggering when you look at the, media, the federal minimum wage is still $7.25 an hour. And you're telling me that the average vehicle, new vehicle being sold, is fifty thousand um, dollars. Want to play trivia? Sure. Oh okay. boy. Nineteen sixty-seven Chevy I... Impala, right? What? What? How much did it cost? Forty-five hundred bucks. Thirty-three fifty. I was close. Thirty-three fifty. How nice. about? How about a? Uh, 1970 Harley Davidson Competition mm. Harley. Uh, th th that was only an 880 um, engine at that point. Oh boy, I'm going to be all over the place. We'll go 6,500. 1,800 dollars. Ah, okay. Now you know it's crazy. That, no, this is what's so sad. I think about where we are, folks. Okay, so you know all you other baby boomers out there, you know that those those are the prices and. So for us, I think it was so much easier to get some of those things. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, yes. Because picture this, right? The 3,300 was a lot of money then, but we were still making 125 bucks a week being a lifeguard, right? And, you see yeah, what I'm saying? And just to, 
I, and just uh, we're throwing around numbers. I think I just looked it up. The average new car sales price thirty seven thousand dollars about okay. in twenty nineteen. Still a staggering amount, man. Quite not quite fifty, but for the point of the conversation, yeah, thirty seven thousand um, dollars. It's still goodness. a lot of money, man. Yeah. yeah. What happened to nice new cars that are you know have warranties that work well for you know ten to fifteen thousand dollars? Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Let's go to Lou in Spokane. Hey, morning, Lou. How you doing? Hey guys. Hey, you know, uh, speaking of the good old times, yeah, I'm a little bit older than you, Tom. Uh, yeah. So I can. <laughs> in 1959, okay, I went to work for a, as an electrician's apprentice. Yeah. And and the the, the journeyman electricians were making about three bucks an hour. That was <clears> huge. <throat> That's a lot of money then. Yeah. Okay. Now you. You could get a job at the steel mills and work virtually all the overtime you wanted. Yep. These guys were paying off their house in three years. How cool is that? I know. It was a, it was, listen, folks, people did pay yeah. off thousands of those. Right. Was the mortgage burning. I remember the parties even in South Boston. Do you know what I mean? You'd have a mortgage burning party. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Taxes were one half what they are now. There was no state income tax. You you paid off your Social Security taxes if you had a decent job in February. Well, I think and every, for the everyone rest was of the year, you weren't paying into Social Security. Well, I know. It, 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 the different time there, Lou, too, is no one was, everyone was working under the table, too. Right? They were working both. I mean, there was so much cash businesses then, it was insane. You know, but. <laughs> Right? I well, mean, that's the reality, it's, folks. It's, <laughs> it's not too much different now, let me tell you. But, but anyway, I was calling in. You know, you guys are talking about long-term trends here. Look at corporate profits by quarter since 2012. Get a chart of that. It's going to blow your mind off. Now, since I 2012, corporate profits are flat. And yet the market's up by, you know, 250%, depending on which index you want to take. What the hell's going on? Yeah, I guess there's just so much cash out here. People are saying, what am I going to do with my cash, right? That's, 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 and, and, and it's not, I'm not even talking about, and all that cash. And I'm not talking about retail, folks. I'm just talking about, you know, corporations, large institutions, too. That's, that's what it comes down to. It's, and you know what it reminds me of, though, there's no doubt. It's just like the, the aspect of, you know, SoftBank, they kept buying their own shares up in the deal. It's like, okay, you know, it is what it is until it isn't. <laughs> you know, I mean, if big companies and trusts have to put their cash to work, well, guess what? They're not going to basically be trying to look for, you know, a percent and a half or 2%, you know, so... They're driving well, the market. Well, the, the, the Fed has pumped in many trillions of dollars. These uh, these stock buybacks have soared, and, and that's all a gift from the Fed. Oh, there's I no doubt. I think without those, you know, we could have a flat to, to down market since 2012 if the Fed wasn't doing it. Yeah, well, I guess they've done it. Cooking, brother. I'd... Okay, guys. Have a great one, Lou. Have a good nice weekend. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Dow's up 15, Nasdaq's up 27, S&P's are up 5. We'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow uh, up 25, Nasdaq up 31, S and P's up six. We got gold up a buck 90. Uh, let's go take a look at the silver market. So silver's getting a little uh, pop up here. We, when we started the program, was up eight cents. Now you're up 16, and the silver. There's no doubt, folks. Silver's highly volatile. Um, someone's out here buying it. So we have 51,000 contracts. Well, we'll see if we can get, get anything else going. Um, you know, it's, it's certainly, you know, it got smoke like gold, but this chart's not as disastrous as a gold chart because, you know, it, it basically hadn't been as high, nor has it been as low. Uh, but we'll see where that shakes out. Let's go to our man, John in Philly. Hey, John, what's going on, brother? Good morning, Tom and Tommy. Thanks for taking the call. Absolutely. Morning, John. So we're going hey, uh, to get some espresso going here, man. <laughs> well, yes, indeed. I, I wanted to ask if you'd uh, pull up Coffee Futures and specifically your Bloomberg Terminal news feed and see if you can uh, uh, take a look at the inventory of stories on that topic just the past day. Um, Tommy, you, um, the reason I'm pulling, I saw on uh, Bloomberg TV yesterday a story about deliverable inventories uh, in the coffee futures market, and uh, I didn't see the story in its entirety and couldn't access it myself. Okay, let's see. And tell me, uh, you've been trading so long, you have seen the stories of many market manipulations that have been infamous. Uh, one comes to mind is back in 93 in oil, and you and I both remember that name. I think it was a German firm called Metall. The shell shaft. Yep. Uh, and then in 95 6, there was a copper futures market scandal. The Japanese firm. Shimatomo. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, now, now, the coffee futures market rallied in the past, you know, eight months, 45, 50% from bottom to top, and now has come back right halfway back. And I, I have a decent feed on. Uh, crop size estimates, but that Bloomberg story I just caught a piece of 
led me to say, you know, was this 45% coffee futures rally just a market manipulation by some player or players who withheld inventories off the market, drove up the price, and then dumped the futures and the inventory at higher price? Uh, that was kind of the hint of the story I saw on Bloomberg TV yesterday was wondering if you might just look on your terminal and see if that's on track. Because I love ferreting out these market manipulation scandals, and sometimes they come and go and vanish, you know, with the wind, and sometimes they play out. So uh, that's yeah. why I'm calling. Cool. So we get the chart up here. It's been quite a move. So you go back to, uh, what, October 16th, you're at 95 cents a pound. You go to a buck 42. You're pulling back. You know, technically, this is a nice setup because technically, you're just pulling back to one of the breakout areas of uh, buck seventeen. Now, I can't. I, I'm sure I'll keep hunting for the story, John. Um, so it's going to be yesterday. So around yeah, it was uh, Bloomberg TV, I caught something. Yeah, and it was one of those teaser spots. In other words, you had to be studying it for 15 seconds, or else you didn't get the. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Story. I'm with you. Um, Brazil coffee crop make him at 70 million bags. Coffee warehouse stocks were plus 15,000. That's the one. That's the story. That's the one. Okay, yeah. That's him. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so you got ice warehouse stocks plus 15,000 to uh, 2,061,311. And. This is just all the numbers. That's what's going on. Yeah. They, they have what they have here, folks, is that they have all the countries that are producing and the types of inventory that they have. You know what is interesting here, John? Did you see? Look at this. How it sticks out like a sore thumb is Honduras. Um, is this what the coffee is? Certified warehouse receipts. So they're all they're stashing it in Honduras. Look at this number. Huh. One yeah. million two hundred twenty-four yeah, thousand. <laughs> That's Where's just, that's, that? everything else, folks, is much smaller numbers. That's intriguing, isn't it? You know, down in, uh, I'm, I'm kind of guessing, Tom, down in uh, Honduras, you might be able to hide lots of stuff down there. Oh, you definitely <laughs> can, man. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, not, that's not terribly well covered. Anyway. That's pretty well, weird, man. That really is weird. Look at that. Yeah, I, it, I'll, uh, Tom, I've shared this with you, but, well, soon. Uh, I've seen this sort of thing happen in the past. I saw it in Silverback somewhere in the 90s. In fact, Andy Hecht, who used to do a show for you, yeah. spoke of a silver manipulation back in the 90s. But we've seen it in oil, copper, and all sorts of things. Shoot, you saw it in potatoes, pork bellies, and onions over the, the decades of market players when you're dealing with very low prices – you know, gain their positions, build up things, right. and then have the power to shift inventories around where the public market can't see it. You know what would be cool, and, John, and I'll try to find it, as to what was the inventory. So picture this, folks. This is pretty cool. So now this is, I'm just going to go slow on this, how this works. So you got an ICE warehouse. ICE is the brokerage exchange. Now what happens, folks, is that when you have a warehouse, you need a certified stock, basically, certificate. Okay, that's what these are, we're talking about. Now, out of the whole, all the certified certificates, right, you got 1.6 million. Well, 1.2 is in Honduras. What I'd like to know is that how many were there last month and the month before, John? You see what I'm saying? That, that would be the information that we'd need to figure out that, okay, here, yeah, where did that come from, right? You know, so pretty wild, man. Very good. Yeah, well, brother. Thanks so much. Uh, Y'all have a good weekend. Thanks for doing the show. You too, man. You as well, John. Yeah. Certified warehouses, Tom. Yeah, oh. right. <laughs> Seriously, man. Yeah. That's pretty strange. Um, but, you know, I guess the real question is what was there last month, too? Do you know what I mean? Yes, so, yes. There's so much to understand in trading. And in a commodity business, folks, okay, the cool thing I'd like about the commodity business, now, now coffee, by the way, you know, John likes trading it, but what does happen with coffee, folks, there's, there's certain futures that are not as liquid, and coffee's one of them, okay, in a, in a big way. And liquid means specifically that you can get in and get out at a spread that the spread alone is not going to kill you from when you buy it and when you sell it, you know. Sure. You know, so sure. coffee, you know, even 
you know, the, the cocoa business, the, the cocoa business, folks, is going to get really intriguing. The reason being is that what they've done in the cocoa market is this, is that the cocoa producers, the, the, the cocoa, not the producers, the countries that produce the most amount of cocoa, when Guy, Guyana is one of the biggest ones, they've decided that they've put a $400 premium on every ton of cocoa, regardless of what the price is. And they're, they're doing that because the, the average cocoa farmer right now is still only making like two bucks a day, which is a joke. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. I know. So, you know, the, the big chocolate companies are actually involved in this because they want to make sure they can still, you know, have chocolate going into the future. Yeah. Sure. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tom and Tommy O'Brien. And we talk about, you know, the bulls and bears fighting it out, folks. There's a couple of uh, equities out here they're fighting out over. One is uh, Restoration Hardware. Yeah, the, what's going on over there? I was checking it out. I saw you checking it out. Really, yeah, no news, right? No. So what it is is that it's the um, this guy that's very famous, okay, um, for basically getting good shot positions on. 
Uh, Crichton says that uh, restoration hardware may be acquired this year and can, you know, get up to $300. Now, this guy had been shot at one point, restoration hardware, flipped the position, decided that he thought he could go higher, right? Now, he's saying $300. Now, and then he's got Peloton that is going to $5. So, evidently, Tom, I think what happens is that they're just getting news on it now, but the, it looks like his investment newsletter came out on the 6th of January. That's what that looks like. You see what I'm saying? All these, if you see, I, I, I get the Bloomberg up and it's, it's showing. Yeah. One. And he's saying shot pellets and targets $5. So I believe, yeah. I believe. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I would, I would, I don't know if that would be moving the stock. That was Monday's news on the Bloomberg. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Believe me, I know. Um, I don't know if that would be what's, what, what has it down. Yeah. Well, I don't, the, I don't, I don't, the, uh, I don't see, because wait, it, it, um, not to jump, but the, the one, there's, there's a 104,000 share block at 212. That's, that's what I think. Yes. Okay. So somebody got out of that stock at 212 and you had it trading yesterday at 219.62. Yeah. So they want out period. Yeah. They want out right now, folks. And what do they want in, man? L Brands, right? How about that oh, one? I yeah. know we don't have time. That's right. Let me boy, see oh boy. Thing before we leave. Yeah, look at that. And, up and another 3.5% today. They're thinking they may spin off Victoria's Secret. Um, look at, I it, saw it. See, they were buying it yesterday. Look at that yesterday. They were. Stay right there, folks. Uh, Bigger Swim's coming up next. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one.